So I once looked up in the sky and saw the moon and thought, this is very unusual. Where's the moon doing in the sky in the middle of the day? Everyone knows that the moon comes up when the sun goes down, and the sun goes up when the moon comes down. It's one of the first things I ever learned in my life. And thinking about this made me realize that I know very little about uh, astronomy. So I decided to try to learn. So one thing that I've learned is that since the sun is in the plane of the equator, half the people on Earth can see the sun at a given time, half the people are at nighttime. Likewise, these half of the people in the blue can see the moon, and the other people can't see the moon. If the moon is over here, we're seeing it from noon to midnight. Over here, we see the moon almost all night. And over here, we're seeing the moon all day. It means there's four categories of people. Depending on where the moon, the sun, and the earth are aligned, you have people who see just the sun, people who see both people who see just the moon and people who see, uh, who see neither. So it turns out that it's not a rare celestial event for the moon to be in the day. It turns out that the moon is uh, up for some time every day and uh, on average six hours a day. Once in a while, we'll see a solar eclipse. This is what it's going to look like in New York, 2000, uh, August 21st, 2017. That's sped up. 100 times. Question, why don't we always get a, a solar eclipse every month when we have this configuration? And the answer is that the moon, uh, the plane that the moon's going around uh, its orbit is slightly off from uh, the way we're going around the sun. So it's rare, but New York City, August 21st, 2017, we'll get a, we will get a rare event, uh, uh, the eclipse. The next question pondered is, why does the moon sometimes look like this, the uh, crescent shape? Well, one model you can make to visualize the moon, the moon's being uh, half lit by the sun and half not lit at any time. So here's a physical analog model. And as you can see, as it, we view this from different angles, you do sometimes see that, that crescent shape occur. By the way, the, uh, the moon covers the, the sun during a solar eclipse. That's very coincidental. The moon happens to be 1 400th the size of the sun and happens to be 400 times closer to the Earth than the sun is. And if not for that, uh, a solar eclipse would look quite different. It's one of the cosmic coincidences. I made a model on Sketchpad to see how the phases of the moon would change as the moon goes around the Earth in its 29 and a half day cycle. If you make a graph of that middle line and what percent of that horizontal diameter is white, it looks like that. It looks a bit like a cosine curve. And with a little bit of work, you can prove that that has to be a cosine curve. something like that. So uh, that, that line, that CV line, is kind of what we see as the center line. It can be done. It is actually a, a cosine curve. Using these facts that, we, that, that have just been presented, we could actually determine what time it is if you know what the moon looks like and where it is in the sky. In 300 BC, Aristarchus made a conjecture and did a proof that the, that the sun, uh, that, that the earth would be 19 times, uh, the, the earth distance from the earth to the sun is 19 times the, earth, the distance from the moon to the earth. Now, this was wrong by a factor of 20. However, <laughs> we can give him a lot of credit because his, his insight was that when there's a half moon, the angle 
uh, at the moon would be, would be a right angle. And using observation at times when the sun and moon are both in the sky, he estimated the angle at B to be 87 degrees. And with that, we now know cosine 87 is approximately 1 over 19. Now, his angle was off by, by a lot. We need very uh, better measurements to, to get that 89.7 degree angle to get the true distance. But we will for, forgive him because not only did he not have the proper measuring tools, but he did not have trigonometry. He did not have cosine of 87 degrees. Instead, he had what we now call pre-trigonometry. If you have two right triangles that share a leg, it turns out that the ratio of the two hypotenuses is greater than the ratio of the two angles, and the ratio of the other two legs is less than the ratio of the two angles. And with that, he was able to prove the distance was greater than 18 and less than 20. <laughs> so we have to admire what you can do if you don't have the proper tools, you can still get there. Thank you. <laughs>